Welcome back to our final segment. It's uh, Fed Augusto, August 15th, 2014. It's the anniversary of Nixon Kissinger destroying the Bretton Woods system in 1971. And it's uh, the Feast of the Ascension and certain other religious holidays. Uh, we would like to add our voice to the appeal coming from uh, the Russian uh, media Save our guys, hashtag save our guys, and hashtag free Andrew. This is Andre Stenin, Russian photographer held prisoner by the uh, the Kiev fascist clique. Save our guys and free Andrew. Now, the uh, the question of Perfid Albion, right? The 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 attempt, obviously, of uh, Cameron to Damage Germany, Italy, and France, right, by creating problems vis a vis Russia, right, this endless game of the British Foreign Office, divide et impera, right, that's their uh, long standing maxim learned from the Venetians back in the 1500s and 1600s. The um, question then points us back towards uh, World War One, right, and the, the monstrous perfidy displayed by Sir Edward Grey. George V ordered him, find a pretext for war, Grey, and he did. It was Belgium, and he grabbed it with both hands and his teeth. Now, um, let's begin to look, though. We're passing through these hundred-year anniversaries. The great issue of the months of August and September is the German deployment, right, the Aufmarsch, and the execution or not of the Schlieffen plan. And we don't want to quibble too much about whether it's the Schlieffen plan word for word or whether it's the modified Schlieffen plan. Uh, fine. Uh, we'll, we, we won't make too much of a formalistic issue out of that. Above all, we're going to have to look at the competence of Helmut von Moltke, M-O-L-T-K-E, the younger. The elder had been the victor of Sadowa in 1866, the seven weeks war between Prussia and Austria won by Prussia, and then the Franco-Prussian War 1870-71, which uh, knocked British puppet Napoleon III. Uh, this younger Moltke, however, was much inferior to his illustrious uncle. Um, and therefore, we have to look at was his uh, deployment uh, adequate? And then, above all, in the critical moment at the first Battle of the Marne, in the first 10 days of September, right, the 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th of September being the key days, uh, what was Moltke doing? And it also focuses on his envoy, the infamous Richard Hench. Think of the Hench men. Moltke's henchman, hench, H-E-N-T-S-C-H, lieutenant colonel from the general staff, who, according to many versions, actually ordered the retreat of the German armies when they were uh, in uh, a uh, not unassailable, but nevertheless possibly victorious position. In other words, these questions of what Machiavelli would have called virtu, meaning human quality, doesn't mean virtue, it means what makes you human. Or, Entschlossenheit, this is a little bit narrower, the Entschlossenheit, the decisiveness, as it is referred to by von Clausewitz. So we're talking about the Schlieffen plan. Uh, and you have to look now, what is the social situation of these officers? One of the things that pops up with Moltke, and we'll have to talk about this in some detail, is that he is surrounded by occultists. And we've pointed to the fact that the last years of uh, the 19th century and the pre-1914 period is this time of tremendous growth of Freemasonic lodges, occultism, theosophy, Madame Blavatsky, uh, we've got uh, Annie Besson, we've got... Uh, clairvoyance we've got mediums when you said the media today 
you mean news media. In those days when you said the media, you're meaning a bunch of people who claim that they can talk to the dead and they can communicate from beyond uh, the grave. Now, remember, this is highly relevant, and we've got to start thinking. You look at Petraeus, right? What did we find out in November 2012 about Petraeus and his friend General Allen? We found that they were surrounded by people like Paula Broadwell, uh, by Jill Kelly uh, there in uh, Tampa at the Central Command. We know that Petraeus is highly connected to the, to the Kagan, Kimberly Kagan and Frederick Kagan of the neocon establishment. We know that Petraeus is now under the guidance of uh, um, uh, Kravis, Henry Kravis from the Kohlberg Kravis Roberts uh, Wall Street uh, hedge fund hyena firm. Uh, we got to look at Maltka because the um, the problem with Maltka uh, may come down to this: that um, his wife, Countess von Maltka, was uh, in touch with a medium, a woman called Lisbeth Zeidler, S E I D L E R. And Elizabeth Zeidler's nickname, if you can believe it or not, was the Sybil of the Army. The Sybil, right? We know the Cumaean Sybil. We know from Virgil, I believe, uh, the Sybil. The Sybils were these sort of local uh, uh, seers, clairvoyants, um, uh, women who could, uh, you know, various versions of the Pythoness at the uh, at the uh, Temple of Apollo at Delphi. So Elizabeth Zeidler was in cahoots with his wife. So Countess von Moltke uh, came with Elizabeth Zeidler to Koblenz uh, during August of 1914. But even before she got there, she called her husband. Countess von Moltke calls the supreme commander of the German forces east and west, that is to say Count Helmut von Moltke, and says, guess what, darling? We've just gotten word from beyond the grave, from the spirit world, the astral plane, and uh, Elizabeth Zeidler has uh, has gotten the, uh, the the view from the astral plane. Uh, and uh, guess what it is, darling? Well, tell me, tell me what it is. What is it? It's that you're going to be defeated. That the German position is hopeless. Even though it looks like you're sweeping all opposition before you, you've swept through Luxembourg. Belgium, with some delay, you lost a few days, okay, but you're now practically at the gates of Paris, and these German and British forces have been reeling. They're defeated, they're demoralized, they're in full retreat, not clear whether they'll be able to make a stand anywhere, but the word from the astral plane by way of Elizabeth Zeidler is, you're defeated. And uh, Moltke, the character of Moltke, well, let's just... Uh, I just want to give you a, uh, a kind of a view from a possibly uh, official uh, historian, David Fromkin, right? David Fromkin wrote A Peace to End All Peace. This is now Europe's last summer who started the Great War in 1914. Fromkin, of course, a, an academic, but not the worst, but of course, Anglophile, right? That it's a German-Austrian uh, conspiracy and the British are blameless. So here's Fromkin. For nearly a century... Debate has raged among participants and then among scholars about the decisive battle with which the Moltke plan concluded. This was the Battle of the Marne, September 1914. On the German side, the question was whether it was Moltke or his young envoy, Richard Hench, the henchman, who ordered the retreat and regroupment Behind the Marne, it's actually not behind the Marne, it's behind the N, A-I-S-N-E, 40 Ks to the north. And whether or withdrawal was correct, was it, was it the correct decision, or whether it snatched defeat from the jaws of victory. That is the problem which uh, Frumpkin at least recognizes. We'll be discussing that during August and into September. So happy... Gusto all around, and we'll be back next week, God willing.